This presentation will analyze the Buenos Aires chapters of two global art initiatives from 2017 and 2018. First, the Museum Global Program from Germany's Kulturstiftung des Bundes, Federal Cultural Foundation, and its collaboration with the Museo de Arte Moderno de Buenos Aires, known as MAMBA, or more recently, Moderno. In the second place, I will turn to Art Basel Cities, the first and only instance of this kind of multi-year engagement without an art fair that took place in Buenos Aires in 2017 and 2018. Art Basel Cities Buenos Aires was initiated and chiefly funded by the neoliberal government of the city of Buenos Aires, in power since 2007, that hired the global art fair giant for a sum over $2.1 million in order to, quote, bridge the international and Argentine art worlds through a series of professional collaborations, projects, and exchanges amplifying Buenos Aires' position as a cultural destination of choice. The MAMBA has acted as an arm of the government ever since the present director is in office. The MAMBA director, Victoria Norton, was appointed in 2013 by the government of the city of Buenos Aires without going through a peer review process in contrast to other museum directors. This signaling of political alliance is not in detriment of Norton's ample professional credentials. My aim here is to bring out the political dimension of art. Endowed with special benefits and administration status and an annual budget of $1 million before the 218 crash, the MAMBA serves to amplify the capacity and visibility of the local art market, seeking thus the same effect that art Basel cities should have had. Ongoing since 2016, the Museum Global is a German federal program funded by the Kulturstiftung with the aim of opening up perspectives on the 20th century collections of five participating museums nationwide. Global Museum stands for the critical examination of the collections of several museums in Germany and by extension, the Western-centric canon of art. One participating museum, the Museum for Moderne Kunst, MMK, in Frankfurt, chose as partner the Museo de Arte Moderno of Buenos Aires. And together, they co-curated the shared travel exhibition, A Tale of Two Worlds. This project was publicized as, quote, the first time that a European museum has allowed its collection to be examined by Latin American curators, thus breaking new ground for Latin American art. This statement confuses art with art history or curator with artist. How it breaks new ground is unclear as a claim is not justified. For the exhibition, A Tale of Two Worlds, different collections were selectively brought together. For example, the works of American pop artists Jasper Jones and Andy Warhol were shown together with Colombian Antonio Caro's work in the same room. The curatorial concept here is rearranging something already given into a new and temporary configuration. To what extent was the resultant new display effectively against setting Latin American production as an additional chapter of the art history from the center? Was there no, quote, hierarchy of artistic movements as read the curatorial statement? I am asking. Let us look at the exhibition catalog to find an answer. Specifically, let's read Mamba's director acknowledgements. The acknowledgement opens with an invocation of obras maestras, masterpieces or masterworks that points to a problematic hierarchical direction. 
masterpiece is, in point of fact, the foundational term of the Western canon. Principal works is just a synonym also employed here. The original meaning of masterpiece refers to the work done to graduate from the guild and become part of it as a master, no longer an apprentice. Any other usage of masterpiece relies on taste, value, beauty, connoisseurship, in a word, the canon. On the MAMBA website, this exhibition is inscribed in language likewise by a tricycle. What is the meaning of proposing a brotherly parity or equity between the art of the global north and the art of the global south? Elsewhere, this sentence appeared rephrased as a quote, a fraternal equality that does not preclude rivalry. What are the implications of positing art as masculine through the brother metaphor? at the very time when a rising feminist movement was emerging in Argentina. The struggle for women's self-determination and for reproductive rights reached unprecedented dimensions in 2018. Is this brotherly reconfiguration really a new vision of history in which, I quote, Latin American art does not complete or complement the canon? Would a sororal perspective instead of a fraternal dynamic do away with patriarchic masterpieces? Now, how is this exhibition, this joint exhibition, a fundamental shift in a reimagining of art and its institutions, as we read in the conference program of Global Museum? The model of museum at stake in this joint project shows an insisting focus on the material. The emphasis is on the collection on the side of MMK and an obsession with the building on the part of Mamba. The new expansion of Mamba building represented an increase in the exhibition space, a total of 1100 square meters that was necessary to host the 500 artworks of the exhibition in 2018. Today, because the restitution of objects is on the agenda as a decolonial task, we are discussing the idea of museums without collections. On the other hand, the possibility of a museum without walls was conceived by André Malraux already back in 1950. I will now bring in a concrete example to further contest the advertised narrative of innovation. This could be another story of a museum's direction irregularly cancelling a guest project to favor, both symbolically and materially, the direction's own project. But the implicit story is more commanding. Allow me to present Mamba's missed chance to complete a project with a southern perspective that reshuffled the local and international dimension, in part because this was an exhibition which was eventually scheduled to be a co-production with the Jeux Pomme in Paris. The planned exhibition was to bring unforeseen images to visibility and earth it out of the archive and thus really change history in lieu of rearranging something given, like did A Tale of Two Words. The Unrealized Project offered a novel revision of the work of Franco-German photographer Giselle Freund, with a major focus on her adoptive Buenos Aires, where Freund lived beyond her wartime exile between 1941 and 1948. The exhibition was really a modern archaeology that reconstructed two aspects of this pioneering work in color photography, content and form. Content-wise, it presented dozens of never-before-seen color photo portraits of Latin American writers and artists, or seen just once 80 years before, who were not part of the Global North canon. Nora Lange or Ezequiel Martinez Estrada are examples. Regarding formal innovation, the exhibition reconstructed the slideshow performances in which these colors were habitually presented. Commented projection was Freud's innovative mode of presenting the famous color transparencies that composed her more 
even more celebrated portrait portfolio of the canonical writers and artists of the 20th century. Among them, James Joyce, André Gide, or Walter Benjamin. The early color film that Freund started using in 1938 in Paris to portray intellectual stars was Kodachrome, an Agfa's light film. This means that it required to be projected in order to be viewed. Following her Buenos Aires experience, Giselle turned the technical necessity of the slide film into an art form, the slideshow lecture. The talks with slideshows, which she practiced all throughout her life and the world over, started in Buenos Aires. The historical revision concerned Giselle Freund's oeuvre, as well as a revised a number of cultural dynamics. First, this approach to Freund truly contested the input-expert circuit of North and South, insofar as Buenos Aires appeared as the center of a formal innovation that catalyzed Freund mixed media slide lecture performances. Second, the exhibition project was also to reverse or discombobulate the North and South dynamics, whereby a global North institution such as the MMK includes the cultural production of the South within its program or its collection. Before Mamba unlawfully canceled the Giselle Fraun exhibition and misallocated the funds to eat allotted by law, the Mamba was to hold the exhibit from September 2017 to March 2018. And then the show was to travel to the Jeux de Bombe in Paris in June of 2018. To my knowledge, no other exhibition project that originated in a local museum has been co-produced or has traveled to the global north to the state. A third point emerges if we consider that for theorist Walter Mignolo, decolonial investigation has the aim of restitution. The repatriation of the portraits of Argentine and Latin American writers effected a restitution of the visual heritage. However, the Mamba replaced the hard work of investigation with rhetorical pronouncements, with a mere tale. Mamba abandoned the Freud project to concentrate all energies and resources in two exhibitions by two canonical male artists, both curated by Northen. The show San Pablo Picasso from 2016 and the also world famous Argentine born artist Tomás Saraceno, the installation from 2017. This were correspondingly the most expensive and the longest exhibitions held at the Mamba to date. For Picasso, just the fee was 100,000 euros. The Saraceno show was on display for 11 months. The public funds assigned to the cancel Giselle Freund were misallocated to likely cover a little just $35,000 of the $2.2 million renovation costs of the Mamba building that was required to host the big MMK exhibition. Another strategic reason for the Freund cancellation was correlated to Art Basel cities. The Art Basel Initiative was launched in November 2017 with international VIP visits for the exchange chapter. Let us note that the Art Basel event was unforeseen in 2014 at the time of the first scheduling of the Freund exhibit. Art Basel Cities was only announced in September 2016. Negotiations started after President Macri came to power. The event counted with the presence of mighty art world figures such as Hans Ulrich Albrecht, director of the Serpentin Gallery in London, Jean Lefresnois, director of Paris Palais de Tokyo, Glenn Phillips of the Getty Institute, German collector Karen Bordos, Pablo Leon de la Barra of the Guggenheim, as well as journalists from the Financial Times, Forbes, Vogue, Monopole, and so on. In their private visits to Mamba, these VIP kingmakers saw in lieu of the Giselle Freund exhibition, Tomás Saraceno's spider installation titled 
How to entangle the universe in a spider web, or cómo atrapar al universo en una telaraña. The curation by No Orthon of this decidedly international, arguably Argentinian artist work staged the good little insect as art maker. It showed a constructive, word making, universe entangling spider without showing its predator side. The absence of the predator when it comes to Saraceno is analogous, may the comparison be legitimate, to the nominal erasure of the power dynamics and real asymmetries in which the productions of North and South, man and woman, guest and director curator are embedded. To conclude, the economic crash of June and September 2018 in Argentina represented a massive devaluation of the peso currency and drop in buying power and a hard blow to the triumphalist globalist stance of the Macri government. The biggest loan in the history of the International Monetary Fund, $57 billion, was solicited around the same week when the Art Basel cities public art program expanded across the city. A very nice contrast, if I may say. The financial crisis brought about a change of policy for the creative industries and the cultural. The Art Basel Cities program was reduced from three to two years. It also entailed on the part of Mamba, a shift away from the equal brotherly global players and gave room to new discourses. The rise of D, EI, diversity, equity, and inclusion is palpable from 2018 to 2021, as is an emphasis on the national or the federal. We will now address the question of how do local museums within Latin America negotiate their own narratives within this emergent discourses from the so-called centers. With MAMBA, the language is lifted from some corner of the echo chamber. It is cosmetic. From now on, we will appreciate a new change in political position that responds to these, to the, at this point, unavoidable feminist movement and the new geopolitical condition. In a recent talk on decolonizing the museum with Northern expressed a changed mindset when she affirmed that not just have works of masters, famous works of art, we need to bring something different to museums. Furthermore, she affirmed that the emphasis on what is local is a characteristic of her program since 2013. We had 65 exhibits of artists of Argentina as a way of bringing justice because for decades they didn't really receive it, their merit. This is specious. It is a misleading statement as it does not indicate the extension, duration, and allocation of resources. How long was it on display? How much money was invested? How much space and square meters? And what about the coloniality of gender? Speaking about the uber local exhibition Una Historia de la Imaginación Argentina, curated by Javier Villa in 2019, no provoked provo provoked us by asking. What would happen if we became more conservative and started talking about tradition nationally, talking about our national identity? We should at least try. Here in the South, we're not going to be uh, considered fascists just because we just want to talk about us. This is false and dangerous. Fascism knows no national borders and no age. In point of fact, the pandemic has re uh, uh, during the pandemic, MAPA has recently engaged in a branding of itself as a living museum, Museo Vivo, that recalls the historically problematic vitalism of the early 20th century. Let us recall in passing that the proto-fascist French folklore Musée des Arts et Traditions Populaires Curated in 1937 by Georges Henri Riviere, called itself Musée Vivant, that is, a living museum, one that was ideologically aligned with Vichy. To conclude, 
Norton specifies three strategies that the Museo de Arte Moderno uses in order to implement a revisionist practice of colonialism in Argentina, end quote. The curation of exhibitions that present both local and international artistic practices with the aim of reformulating them from a decolonial Southern Latin American centered point of view. Two, an obsessive insistence on the importance of local art in all its historical expressions and content. Three, an incessant research focused in the contemporary artwork as well as in all its federal complexity. The last point of these three is practically meaningless language. I have just raised a red flag on the right wing dangers suggested by the naive nationalism pertaining to the second. Regarding the first point that seeks to revise and reformulate historically history emphatically from the global south, that's a story that I hope I have sufficiently exposed. Thank you.